Good morning. Happy Sabbath. We're going to start with number 224. Seek ye first the kingdom. 224. Next song is <clears throat> number 227, Jesus Shall Reign, 227.
Stage is over. 229. All hail the power of Jesus' name. 229. Gracious Heavenly Father, we just so are thankful to be here today in your presence. We pray, Father, for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, especially on this special day when uh, Pastor Adrian is being ordained to the gospel ministry. We pray that you will be with him, and bless him and his family, Father. We pray especially today as we hear the message from Elder Kevin Miller, that your Holy Spirit would soften our hearts, open our eyes and our ears, so that we can see and hear what you have for us today. Help us to humble our hearts before you. We pray through that, Father, that you would revive our church. In Jesus' name. opening song is number 249. Praise him, praise him. Please stand. 249.
Happy Sabbath. Before I get into the announcements, let's just stand up and fist bump your neighbor and tell him Happy Sabbath. Well, let's do a few announcements this morning. Uh, first of all, to remind everybody, we have our revival prayer meetings here at the church every Wednesday night at 6.30. And we also have uh, potlucks postponed until further notice. Uh, we have talked about picnics a little bit, so we'll keep it that. Uh, so prayer time will be held at 9 o'clock here on Sabbath, excuse me, 8.30. So if you want to be a part of prayer time, on Sabbath prior to church here at 8.30. Um, let's see, we also have Alaska Book Center foods are available. Look in your um, bulletin for further information on uh, Alaska Book Center foods. And Bill Starn has an announcement. He wants to Yeah, we started a 12-part uh, a um, Vespers last night, which will go to the last set, uh, Friday night of December, and uh, it's on winsome witnessing. And so there was actually quite a few people here last night, and started at seven o'clock. And um, anyway, we're going to continue to do that. It's a series by Gary Gibbs, and it's just a practical, a lot of practical things that we can do to be better witnesses. And uh, Anyway, look forward to continuing that series, and everybody is invited uh, Friday nights, 7 o'clock here. Thank you. All right, thank you, Bill. Uh, do we have any other announcements that I need to mention today? Anybody have anything? Okay. 
Alrighty. Well, the next thing we'll go into is our tithe and offering. And like we've always done, we have our tithe and offering uh, buckets on the table as you exit the sanctuary on your left. One's for tithe and offering. The other one is for the children's story. So let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. The, uh, before, I, before we do that, the loose offering today is uh, for the voice of prophecy. And my daughter-in-law, Vanny, if you can help me out with this. They have it here in Spanish. La Voz de Esperanza. Did I say that? <laughs> okay. Well, I had the hillbilly version. That's okay. All right, let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. <laughs> Gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for how you've blessed us. Help us, Lord, to be faithful in our tithe and offering. And Lord, may it go to usher in your kingdom. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, All right kiddos, it's time to come up for the children's story. Come on, come on up. I'll make some room for you here on the front row. Good morning, kids. Happy Sabbath. So good to see you. I'm glad you're here. Uh, this morning, I have, I have for you a little demonstration. Uh, you already see uh, part of my pod right here. It's a, uh, it's a bowl. So, how many apples do you think I need to use in order to fill this bowl? I got some apples, too. So let's see. One apple. Two, three. These are honey fruits. My favorite apple. They're so good and juicy and sweet. So what do you think? Is this bowl full right now? You think it is? Hmm. Let's see, because I've got here some other fruits that are a lot smaller. So how much of this cramp? Do you think I can put in there and make this bowl really full? Let's see. All of it? Let's see. You know, when we first looked at the, at the bowl filled with apples, you might have said, you know, man, that's a full bowl. But look at this. You know how many cranberries I can put in here? It's almost. Clean up. See that whole bag. See? How about now? Do you think this, uh, this bowl is full now? Now it's full, right? Hmm. Let's see, because I've got here some water. And what do you think? How much of this water I can pour in this bowl and make it really full? Let's see. Oh my goodness, that's a lot of water in there. And see, now it's full. So it's almost half a gallon of water. After we already thought, man, that bowl is really full. But you know, I'm not here to demonstrate how many apples or cranberries we can fit in this bowl. I want to talk about something else. See, our dates, our time, in, is one of the most precious gifts we receive. It is, time is life. The fact that we are alive today 
It's such a great blessing. It's the great, one of the greatest gifts ever given to humankind. But our days are just like this ball. You know, in, in, during the day, we can do all kinds of things, important things and less important things. So what is one of the important things we have to do as kids? Can you give me some examples? Some of, some of the things you guys do in, during the day that, are, that is very important. Yes. Correct. And sometimes that may be uh, you guys, you play a lot, right? And for your age, playing is very important. I heard somebody say one time that we do not stop playing because we grow old. We grow old because we stop playing. And you know what? Playing for your age is very important. It is very... How about... What else? What is very important for us to do? Learn and pray. Some of you guys go to school. That is your responsibility. Going to school and learning. You wake up in the morning and what is the first thing you have to do? You know? Pray. Yeah, that is a very important thing. And then eat. You cannot go to school without eating, right? Uh, there are a lot of things, chores. You mentioned something, you know, about our parents, they ask us, can you do this or that? And those are important things. Well, our lives and our days are very much like this bowl. We start with the big things. You can feed a lot of apples. Apples are very important. Playing and doing chores and learning and going to school. But you know, some of us, you want to have fun too, right? And uh, what do you do for fun? Play games. Now, let me ask you, what happens if you start with games in the morning instead of starting with the important things? What happens if you start with games? Games are not necessarily bad. But if you start with games, you want more and more and more. And you know what happens when you start with the small things, the less important things? Let's see something that happens. See, we take out the important things out. We take the apples out, and we fill our days with fun and games, maybe some video games or play. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. But if you start, you know, during the day, if you do all the fun things, and you leave out the chores, and reading your Bible, and praying, see, all the important things are out. And now, at the end of the day, you say, oh, I need to do that chore, and you add that. And I need to do this other chore. And I need to um, eat my lunch. And I need to read my Bible. Oh my goodness, the, my bowl is already full, and I have so many important things to do. You see what happens? You have no more room for the important things. So what is the lesson? You know, in the Bible, there is a verse that says this. Jesus said this, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness, and all these other things shall be added unto you. You do the important things in your day, and you'll find out that you have time for the fun things, for games, and for playing, and riding your bikes. But if you start with the less important things, at the end of the day, you'll find out that, you know what? I don't have time for those, th those important things anymore. So what is the lesson for us today? Yes. First things first. First things first. Important stuff. Yes, and we all know what the important stuff is, right? So let's, let's say together that verse from the Bible. Seek ye first. Let's say it together. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness and all these things shall be added on you. Thank you, kids. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and we thank you for all these children. I ask that you bless them, that you give them wisdom to number their days wisely and uh, for us parents, we ask wisdom to be able to raise them for you, for your kingdom. And as we seek your kingdom first and its righteousness, all the other things shall be added unto us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
after service, see me. If you want to eat an apple, see me after service, and I have a bunch of apples for you guys, okay? This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Good morning, church. God is good. And all the time, praise the Lord. I want to welcome each one of you in a special service. This is not just our, our regular worship service, but every Sabbath anyway is a special service when we come before the presence of the Almighty. Is that right? Amen. But in addition to our special worship service, this is also an ordination Sabbath where we have gathered here together to ordain the pastor of this church district, Pastor Adrian Nexu. Uh, for the next series of parts in the program, if you have your bulletin, I'm going to be starting with sharing the call of ministry. I'm going to be reading the call of ministry of your pastor here. And I will start from the very beginning. Adrian Nexu was born on May 4th, 1979 in Sobozia, a small town in southeast Romania. He has three siblings, two older brothers and a younger sister. He considers himself blessed to, uh, to be born in an Adventist home, a home where his parents' love for God was genuine, a home where God was not even an idea but a person and a loving father. Pastor Adrian states, I will never forget the longing my mother had for God's presence in her and in her children's life. She is the one that led me to Christ and instilled in me the faith that God's kingdom is real and that there is no higher calling than to build his, to build his kingdom. For the first 10 years of his life, he grew up under communist dictatorship. Their freedom as Christians were heavily restricted. The church was badly persecuted by the authorities, and yet despite all these, his faith, young as he was, was strong. Early on in his life, he learned to take pride in witnessing about his Savior and his faith, aware of the spiritual struggle that is going on around them all the time. In 1989, Following a violent and bloody uprising, the regime changed, and for the first time in 50 years, as a church, they were allowed to do outreach, to evangelize and spread the good news. These were formative years for him as a young man on fire for Christ. During the next few years, his local church engaged in evangelism, church planting, and literature evangelism. Witnessing people coming to Christ, seeing how their lives were changed became a great joy for Adrian. This was the time when the Holy Spirit called him to ministry. And without his knowing, his father, other local leaders, and his pastor conspired to steer him and a couple other young men in the church towards ministry. Pastor Nexu states, I will always be grateful for the way God used my pastor and his wife. They became my mentors, my friends, my role models, instrumental in me following the path I followed. In 2002, he graduated with a bachelor's degree in theology from the Seventh-day Adventist Theological Institute, Adventist University in Bucharest, Romania. During these formative years, his thirst for the Word of God grew even deeper. It was this thirst that motivated him to further his education a little more. Then in 2002, he moved to the United States as an international student. In 2006, he graduated with a Master of Divinity degree from Andrews University Theological Seminary. Adrian is blessed with two wonderful children, Andreas Abel 
and Rachel Anna. While God is blessing them in many ways, he considers parenting the greatest of all blessings. In 2006, he had the privilege to work as a youth pastor for the Phil M. Seventh-day Adventist Church in Hinsdale, Illinois. In 2015, he received a call to serve as a pastor in the Ketchikan Craig District in Southeast Alaska. While formal education has its place, he learned that God brings toward growth, brings about growth in our lives in very informal ways. Every day, he's inspired and is learning more from fellow believers. Currently, he's humbled and honored to serve as the pastor for the Wasilla and Talkeetna District. His one desire is that our God will be glorified in our midst. His motto in ministry in 1 Corinthians 9, 19 and 23, For though I am free from all men, I have made myself a servant to all, that I may be win the more. I have become all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. Now this I do for the gospel's sake, that I may be partaker of it with you. Our next part of our program will be a scripture reading by his son, Andreas. Our scripture reading is from 1 Timothy 4, 11 through 16. These things command and teach. Let no one despise your youth, but be an example to the believers in the word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. Till I come, give attention to reading, to exoneration, to, doc to doctrine. Do not, let, do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you by prophecy with the laying on the hands of, of the eldership. Meditate on these things. Give yourself entirely to them and your progress may be evident to all. Take heed to yourself and to the doctrine. Continue in them, and for in doing this, you will both save both yourself and those who hear you. Uh, may God bless this scripture reading. Testing. My own? Okay. Good morning. The song we're going to sing is called Spirit Wind.
Good morning. It's always good to be out here and be in the house of God and blessed with uh, fellow believers. Let me tell you what, uh, I had to go through almost a year uh, without that opportunity. So uh, when you don't have it for a while, it becomes very, very dear to you. I want to thank you for... uh, nice of a guitar to be uh, that's okay. uh, um, for sharing and allowing uh, this to be our, our worship service this morning. Ordination is a very special moment in the life of a pastor, in the life of of an elder or a deacon even as we ordain those roles as well in the church. Uh, but as a pastor, when you, when you finally come to the point where the church is recognizing what God has been 
developing in you for such a long period of time, uh, it is a special moment to say, wow, I, I think this really is the place and, and trajectory where we're heading. Now, if it was just limited to a, an individual's life journey, we could do this in a back room somewhere on Wednesday or Tuesday morning or whatever. But it's not just in the life of the individual that this is important. It is in the life of the community of faith, in the uh, family of God, in the body of Christ. It is also very special and important to this. Because what it's saying is God has reached down into us collectively and chosen one of us to set aside for this particular role in the church. And we need to be recognizing that God is working within our family. And so we share this all together. And that's why we do this uh, typically at a camp meeting. Uh, of course, with uh, our year that we've had so far, it's been an interesting moment, right, in time. And so we share this together. It's an individual, certainly, thing, but it's also a collective uh, moment as well. Uh, because Pastor Adrian, uh, due to the fact of his demonstrated call, we are going to say that he is now open to and available to the whole church uh, around the world in his call. So it's a, it's a collective moment as well. So when we come to this, um, we have to come to it with a, a, a wide open eyed kind of thing. Uh, many people come into ministry with a kind of a romantic view of ministry. They think uh, they're going to come in and they're going to be a cross between Billy Graham and Martin Luther. I know because I was that guy. And uh, I thought everything I was going to do as a pastor was going to be giving Bible studies during the week and then preaching. Uh, you know, that's all there was going to be to it. And certainly those are pillars that we uh, have in ministry. But pastor, pastoring is so much more, so much more comprehensive than that. In fact, pastoring really is, uh, has a twofold purpose. It has, one, to, to keep our eyes focused on Jesus as a family. You know, it's pretty easy here on this planet, right, to find the distractions that can carry us off into all kinds of places. And pastors are supposed to be the ones to help us uh, get back and, and keep focused. And, the, and that brings us to the other one is that they're people focused. Pastoring is all about people. And if pastors find themselves going in directions that are less than people, then they probably are finding other avenues of ministry to, to get into. Uh, so pastoring is about people. It's about connecting people with Jesus and keeping the focus there. And so that's what we do as pastors. Before we go any further, I'm going to have a, a quick prayer just as we open up the word. Gracious Father, thank you so much for this opportunity to be here and to find uh, the joy in, in recognizing that you are working within our church, within our family, right here even in uh, Wasilla, Talkeetna, Ketchikan, Craig, through the life of Pastor Adrian Nexu. And so as we uh, think about what it means to be a pastor this morning, Lord, I pray that you will uh, just grace us with your presence, your spirit, and your message. We pray in Jesus' name. All right, so uh, I want to highlight just three areas here that have come to me over the years uh, in what it takes to do ministry, all right? So 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy in the New Testament, the Apostle Paul is writing to his protege, 
chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. Chapter 2 of 2 Timothy, verses 3 and 4. And Paul says this, Share in suffering as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No soldier gets entangled in civilian pursuits since his aim is to please the one who enlisted him. Pastors will need, people in ministry will need a soldier's focus. Uh, When you're on the battlefield, right, is there anything else on your mind other than the battle? There better not be, otherwise you're going to end up a casualty, right? So when you're entering into this thing called ministry, you have to understand that you're going to be standing and moving on this spiritual battlefield. And it's a real place. It happens in the lives and in the hearts of individual people that God will place within your care. And you're going to enter into that suffering with them. You're going to get into the knit and the grit of their lives. That's what's going to bring about the impact that your pastor gave to you in the mentoring that he provided it to you, pastors who provided it to me, or pastors perhaps who provided it to each one of us who are sitting here this morning. But you're going to be on that spiritual battlefield. And there will be suffering that goes with it. Uh, When I first came into ministry, I didn't realize that part of it. Uh, I had that romantic notion about uh, doing evangelistic meetings and winning all kinds of people to Christ and doing that kind of stuff. But I didn't realize that God was also calling me to walk the way of suffering because that's how Jesus did it. He walked and learned and and ministered on that spiritual battlefield. And so you have to stay focused. You cannot get entangled with other distractions in life, right? You have to stay. If this is where I'm going to be, if this is what God has called me to be, then I have to stay focused here. Otherwise, what will happen is someone will get hurt spiritually. Someone will get uh, abandoned. Someone will get neglected. Someone will not get what they're needing if we uh, go up and do these other distractions that kind of come up and creep up on us. And let me tell you, there's all kinds of positive distractions, right? There's uh, good things that we get ourselves into and so forth and so on. But a pastor stays to the pastoring. A pastor stays to the ministry. A pastor stays uh, very focused on where and what they are about. All right. And then, because they do, they can war like Christ. Um, in the church today, I'm, I'm sensing that we like to war like the devil more, more than we like to war like Jesus. Um, Paul says that the weapons that we use are not carnal weapons. So we, uh, we don't use the, and play the way that uh, everyone else out there plays. We have to do it the way Jesus does it. That's a tough thing to do. And as a pastor, it's a very tough thing to do because you might have people who come up and they want to use uh, the world's way of doing things. And you're going to have to say, no, we're going to do it with uh, the truth as it is in Jesus. We're going to do it with the righteousness that comes from God. We're going to do it with prayer. We're going to do it with the love that comes from from on high. We're going to do it in a way that um, brings about salvation, peace, and doing it with the sword of the Spirit. And uh, all this other stuff needs to go away. Because this is what breaks down people's barriers. This is what breaks down people's um, impediments to God. Is when we do what Jesus did and walk in the way that Jesus walked. One of the stories in the social unrest out there right now that comes to me, I I think of a, a black pastor down in Florida 
who ministered to a white racist won his heart and baptized him. Uh, one of those guys who was at that Charlottesville rally where that young lady was killed. That's what we're talking about. That's using the weapons that Christ has given us to, to use. And so we have to remain focused. Otherwise, if we don't, we can get off and start using the world's way of doing things. So the first thing that a pastor needs is soldier's focus. Second thing he needs, if we turn into our Gospel of John, the Gospel of John. Chapter 10. This is where we get what we call ourselves today. Chapter 10, Gospel of John, chapter 10, verses 2 through 5. Oh, we can read verse 1, I guess. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the gatekeeper opens. The sheep bear his, hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow, but they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. Pastors will need a shepherd's heart. They're going to need a shepherd's heart. Uh, man, that can that can be a, a high high task to, to get to sometimes. Pastors will need a shepherd's heart. Number one, don't get tempted to come to the place where you think you need to do something in a, a less than transparent way. Always come through the door of Christ. Don't ever come across the wall. Don't ever come across uh, in a way that you think, well, this will sneak up on somebody. Don't do that. Uh, even though it may take a lot longer, it may take uh, more time, energy, emotional wherewithal, do it the way that Jesus said to do it. You come through the door because that will have the lasting impact of Jesus on your ministry and on your life and on that person's life as well. Always use the door of Christ. By the way, Adrian, um, Pastor Adrian, your, your language is a romance language, right? What's the word for uh, shepherd in Romania? What's it? That's right. Did you hear what he said? Say it one more time. Pastor. That's, that's the word, and it's a Latin, and it means shepherd. And so uh, in Spanish, I took a Spanish class, and we were talking about pastors, and they, she said, uh, the teacher said, what is it? What is that? And I'm thinking somebody that preaches, and, and somebody says, it's a shepherd. She, they said, she said, that's right. So that's what a pastor is. That's where the word comes from, is, uh, is shepherd. So we must come in under the good shepherd if we're to have the impact that we're supposed to have always use the door of Christ. When you do that, you will be able to, to know your sheep. <laughs> you will be able to know the people that he's entrusted to you and to your leadership, to your care, to your wherewithal as a pastor in that setting. Get to know the people. And that means more than just a high five on Sabbath morning, right? So uh, I know Pastor Adrian is a visiting pastor but there are places and times where you can engage with people's lives, and that's what we're here to do. We're here to keep that focus uh, in no matter what situation, right? I was uh, asked to a, a young man's um, saxophone recital at a school one time, elementary school, you know. 
And I, what, a, what, a, what a privilege to have someone ask you to come to that and be a part of that because they want that uh, representation there. So there's all kinds of ways that you can do that. And as you know your people, then guess what? They get to know you too. And there will come times when you have to have those conversations that are tough, right? Nobody likes those tough conversations. But if they don't know you, you can't have those conversations. But if they do know you, and they know that you have their best interest at heart, if they know that you love them, if they know that you have been caring for them, then they're ready and open to take those kinds of situations that come along. And finally, as a shepherd, and this is later on in the passage there, Jesus says a shepherd will willingly lay down their life for the sheep. Can you imagine that? Um, now I'm not talking about people here, okay? I'm talking about animals. So you got a, somebody out there in the wilderness. they got a bunch of sheep, and they're going to fight a bear as in this case of David. For the sake of sheep. They're going to fight a lion for the sake of sheep. They're going to fight off bands of robbers for the sake of sheep. Does that really make sense? I mean, when you, but if it's your livelihood, if it's what's been entrusted to you, if that's how it is that you are going to take care of your family and take care of your community, then you do those things. And as, as pastors, pastors lay down their lives on a daily basis for members in all kinds of ways that are unseen. Nobody asks, uh, pastors don't want anybody to know those things. But they do that because they care deeply. They love deeply the people that they serve because they love Jesus who has called them to do it. And that's how you know the real shepherds from the false ones. The third thing, so a, a soldier's focus, a shepherd's heart, the third thing is found in Matthew chapter 28. Got to get to the right Matthew. Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 and 20. Jesus said this, right? Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 and 20. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Pastors will need an evangelist zeal, especially a Seventh-day Adventist pastor. Will need an evangelist zeal. And what that means is zeal is not the same as fanaticism. <laughs> Let's get that straight right here. Zeal is the compelling nature that I have to go out and I have to share Jesus with somebody else. That's what it means. So the first thing is you need to love Christ, right? You need to love Jesus with your whole heart. Love the Lord your God with all your mind, with soul, and spirit. Everything about you. And if you love Jesus, then you will love his gospel. By the way, what does gospel mean? What does it mean? Good news, right? I gotta tell you, a lot of people out there think it means bad news. It means good news. It means good news that within a pandemic we have someone to look to. It means within social unrest there's somebody who can bring peace. It means that within the, the spheres of our breaking up families, it means that there's someone who can hold us together. It means that there is someone out there for us who has our best interest at heart, who took us to Calvary on our behalf, and he went up there instead of us. It means good news. And so share it as good news. Love is gospel. 
as a Seventh-day Adventist pastor, love the three angels' message. Because it means that that good news is coming into a wider situation where Jesus is coming again. Jesus will redeem his people in total. And we don't have to die to get there. It means that he will come and take us all with him. And it's coming sooner, I think, than we think. Love Jesus. Love his gospel. Love the three angels' message. Love people. People are not a means to an end. People are the end. Love people. People are not our employees in the church. They are our brothers and our sisters in the faith. We are here to make sure that the distractions stay, stay uh, at a distance. But love people. Love the people here. Love the people that you want to reach. And then make disciples. Make disciples. Help people understand the love for Jesus. And when we do that, when we do that, here is our reward. Matthew chapter 19. Matthew chapter 19. Here is our reward, verse 29. Matthew chapter 19, verse 29. The disciples were all worried about what they were going to get. <laughs> And so Jesus let them know. Matthew chapter 19, verse 29. And everyone who has left houses, or brothers, or sisters, or father, or mother, or children, or lands for my name's sake, will receive a hundredfold and will inherit eternal life. Jesus says to us, whatever is sacrificed for him, he will bring it back to us in some form or fashion. And i got to say, it's been my experience. I, I think sometimes I sacrificed a lot, and then I find out that it turned into a blessing more than a sacrifice. I don't know how that works, but with Jesus, it's the way it does. So pastors are rich in their experience with Christ and his ministry. Um, I can't tell you all the, all the interesting experiences I've had, but in my first church district, probably within the first, I think, six months I was there, I was sitting in front of a judge. Uh, and I wasn't on trial, by the way. I was sitting there because I was making a statement on behalf of the church in the case that was presented before the judge. It was like, wow. I mean, this is in my first six months of ministry. Rich in the, in the experience of Jesus. I can, I can tell you the first time that, that I made a, made a call for decision and someone came forward. Just, just, to, just to think that little old me, guy from Tennessee, you know, had this experience where somebody actually accepted the invitation that was presented. I can tell you my first baptism. I can tell you all those kinds of things. I can tell you uh, the richness of the experience that comes in ministry. Pastors are not only rich in their experience, but they are rich in their relationships if they will love people. I have lifelong friends from everywhere I've been because of the richness of who they are as people. Uh, when you get to know people, you get to know who they are, what their story is, and their experience with Jesus is, and where they come from, and who they are. It just makes your life so much more richer, so much more uh, meaningful. And that's the last thing, is that your life will have a special purpose and meaning of who you are in the family of God. You have been selected by God. His hand's been upon you. 
to take up a role that is very unique within the family. Doesn't mean it's, it's more important or less important, it just means it's unique in that sense and uh, it will have a special purpose and meaning. Because pastoring is a unique calling. It requires us to live a dedicated and a focused life in Christ and therein is the strength for that, this aspect of ministry. And so I'm looking forward, Pastor Adrian, to a long, fruitful ministry from you, especially here in Wasilla and Talkina. <laughs> but I want you to stay focused on Christ Jesus so that you will help focus people on him as well. I'm going to invite you forward here now, Pastor. I'm going to ask Elder Santos also to join me. When we, when we have ordinations, we, uh, we charge the candidate to give an ordination charge. This is kind of the last piece uh, in what they go through to reach this point. So Pastor Adrian has demonstrated that he has had the call of God upon his life to be a pastor. He's done that over the last five years here in our conference. Uh, in fact, I remember Pastor Adrian, our first encounter. I think you called me on the phone, if I remember right. Uh, it's been a while now. Um, but he called me from Chicago and said, you know, he was looking maybe for a, a place to pastor, and he would like to get into pastoring and so forth. And we talked, and, and uh, I, I liked what I heard and everything, but he was in Chicago. <laughs> So uh, I don't know how long it was after that phone call, but then he shows up in Alaska, and he came and visited us. And his excuse was that uh, he, he actually was there with some friends or something to go hiking, yada, yada, yada. But it turned out he was there so he could come and, and show his face and tell us and get us to know him because he knew a phone call wasn't going to do it. And that made a huge impression on us uh, at that time, actually. The initiative it took uh, for you to, to reach out that way and come. And so I don't think we could respond immediately, but when we had the opportunity to respond, we did. And uh, Adrian, uh, Pastor Adrian has been with us since. And so it's been a, been a joy. So he's been demonstrating his call in a pastoral environment for the last five years. And during that time, he's had to demonstrate that he can uh, keep a church running, keep a church going, add ministries, baptize people, uh, influence people to Christ, and so forth and so on. And he's done it in, some, in a place that's unique. His churches, he had to... He had to float by boat to, or fly by plane to get between the two of them. He's done a good job. And then as he demonstrates that over time, then what happens is, uh, as through some training and so forth, and at the end of that period of time, typically between four to six years, so a pastor just doesn't walk in and we ordain them. They, they demonstrate for a period of time so that they understand that God is calling them, um, like I said, a lot of people come in with romantic notions about what pastoring is. And those type of people kind of tend to don't adjust. Who don't adjust, they don't stay either. Um, but then it's also for them to understand that and for the church as a whole to understand that. And then at the end of that, he goes through a review. He went through a ordination review. And so he was asked all kinds of questions, like theological questions, practical pastoral questions, uh, stewardship questions, all these kind of things, just kind of to uh, understand what he had learned, what he was growing in, and where he's at in ministry to get us to this point. Because when we move forward from today, he will become Elder Adrian, as you noticed in the thing, uh, the bulletin, Elder Adrian next year, 
and he will be available to the world church uh, for the gospel ministry. So here's our charge. This is the last thing. It comes in three parts. And it comes from the Apostle Paul to his protege Timothy, who's our kind of protege or to our prototype, I should say, pastor. 1 Timothy 1, 5 through 7. The Apostle Paul says, The aim of our charge is love that issues from a pure heart and a good conscience and a sincere faith. He says, do not wander away from this. The aim of the charge is love. Love for God and love for people. Secondly, in 1 Timothy 6, 11 through 14, the apostle says, I charge you in the presence of God to keep the commandment unstained and free from reproach until Jesus returns. That commandment is love the Lord your God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. And he says to do that, you will need to pursue. Now that's an interesting word, pursue. That means you have to actively go after these things. Righteousness, you will guard your heart. Godliness, you will demonstrate uh, his his work in your life. Faith, you will have to put your foot into the water first many times. Love, he says, you will have to engage in it with the love. Steadfastness, in other words, you're the rock. And so you must fasten yourself to the rock. And gentleness. This is not a job for people who want to to, uh, boss people around. He says, fight the good fight of faith and take hold of eternal life. So it's to you to knit eternal life to this temporal life and the hearts and the lives and the minds of those God has given you to serve. Thirdly, 2 Timothy 4, 1 through 5. The apostle says, I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus. Preach the word in season and out of season. It means in the pulpit, but also in the conversations. That you are the one who keeps that focus directed to where we need to be, and that is to the living word. So be sober-minded, he says. In other words, don't get full of all the, the stuff that tends to float through uh, the church. Is the, the, do the work of an evangelist and fulfill your ministry that God has called you to. All right, at this time, I'm going to have you just kneel right here. And I'm going to invite our our elders, our local elders, Pastor Tana, you can join us as well. Uh, Thank you for being with us. As we lay hands on um, Pastor Adrian, setting him aside, recognizing what God has done in his life. And we're going to have Elder Santos uh, provide the prayer of dedication. So is there also an elder? Is there also an elder from Talkeetna? Uh, Ron? Would you yeah, please come Ron. and join us here? Any other elders from Any? Talkeetna and this church, Wasilla? All right. Well, let's All right, I'm going to invite the congregation to please bow your heads as the elders here in front will kneel and we place our hands upon Pastor Adrian. Let us pray. Gracious, loving Father, what a privilege and honor it is before you to come before your presence. Today, humbly, dear Father, we present to you this servant of yours, Pastor Adrian Nekshu. Dear Father, we pray and commit him to you. You have called him in ministry many years ago and has responded to that call. Each day, he endeavored to serve you and minister on your behalf. But today, dear Father, we set him aside as a practice in the church to pray for this special ordination of this man of yours, this servant of yours. 
Lord, we pray that we please pour your Holy Spirit in a powerful way upon him. Without measure, give him, dear Father, that special anointing that when he speaks, when he, when he dialogues with people and converse with them, dear Lord, they will see that this man has been with you. We come before your presence, dear Lord. We pray that you would not only set him aside for holy work, yet his role and purpose, dear Lord, is to, to be able not only to share the gospel, but to train as many people for your kingdom. Dear Father, to grow your kingdom here that, so that way many people will be brought into this king, your kingdom because of his ministry. Dear Father, we have set him aside laying our hands as the practice in in biblical times that we have set him aside for your work Your father we know that the evil one will attack this pastor his family but I pray that you'll put a hedge protection upon him and his children we believe and claim the promise that greater is he that is in us than he that is in this world we pray that you'll give him favor from above we pray that you'll pour your spiritual gifts upon him give him wisdom Give him knowledge. Give him your Father discernment how to be able to serve and honor you the best way he can. Your Father, we're grateful for his church family that are here. The elders that are laying their hands upon him. The pastors. Your Father, we pray that indeed we are grateful how you have brought this man before you through the years. We are privileged, your Lord, to come before your throne now as we present to you in this prayer. Will you take this father, the servant of yours, give him your favor, give him your blessings, but more of all, dear father, give him the opportunity to reflect you, to reflect the character of Jesus, the best way, dear father, that you will be honored and glorified. We're grateful and thankful that you have heard our prayers. This we pray in Jesus' precious holy name. Amen. 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 Elders, stay, stay here. And um, Pastor Adrian. Right. This is your ordination to the gospel ministry certificate. And uh, it's very nice, but the idea behind it is that when you get to those moments, uh, you look at this. I'd look at mine. And you say, yes, Lord. Elder Adrian, I want to say a few things. Welcome to the gospel ministry. I want to welcome you to the... Uh, 7th Avenue Church, but the worldwide 7th Avenue Church, and the conference here acknowledges your ordination today, but also welcome. We're grateful for your fellow minister that is here. This morning, your other peers and colleagues have acknowledged and are praying and congratulated you for this special day. They have also expressed their thanksgiving to God for you today. Your church family that are here today, that are supporting you. In fact, I'm going to invite, uh, if there are representatives here from Balkitna, would you please uh, stand for, stand? Is there anybody from Balkitna? I know we have uh, Rod and Brenda, his wife, and there are others who are going to be, and, fe and, uh, and uh, also those who are watching, going to be watching this live stream. I'm going to also acknowledge the, um, the home church, Wasilla Congregation, would you please stand? If you're a member of this church, would you please stand? You're witnessing the ordination of your pastor. Thank you. If you may be seated. If you are friends of the pastor, you're visiting from other churches, would you please stand? We're grateful that you are here today. Thank you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. For those of you watching live stream, the Ketchikan Church, well, unfortunately, we're not able to bring you bring you here but you're watching from through live stream we're also thankful for your support and prayers for pastor or elder uh, next you and those from Craig who will be watching eventually from DVD I'd like to also invite the children to be here 
uh, the Andrea and Rachel, will you come to the front? Andreas, Andreas and Rachel. These have been of support to their father. Good, you can come close to your dad. <laughs> your loving dad, right? Now, uh, you heard in his uh, call to ministry, these are precious children of his that uh, they mean the world to Pastor Adrian. And they support him and he supports them. And now before the congregation, I'd like to ask you, would you be willing, by the way, ordination, that means he's not a super pastor, okay? He needs your prayers even more today. How many of you will say before the Lord, we're willing to pray even more for Pastor Adrian? Would you raise your hands and say a hearty amen? amen? Pastor Adrian, I'm going to present to you a special Bible, or nation Bible. This is another sword. When you go out and preach and share the gospel to the Lord, in behalf of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, That's right, it's your turn. Um, you know, uh, this is a special moment for me. And uh, over the last couple of uh, months, I tried to prepare myself for this. But this morning, uh, this morning I found myself overwhelmed with emotions. Uh, the verse or the, bio, the scripture that came to my mind when, uh, remember when God called Isaiah to ministry, to be a prophet. And uh, Isaiah humbled, asked God and asked himself, why me? Woe is me, for I am a man of unclean lips. I live amongst the people of unclean lips, and yet God is calling me. And then something happens. An angel takes a coal from the altar, touches his lips, and all of a sudden, Isaiah is ready to minister. But that feeling, why, why me? There's nothing uh, that recommend. I mean, that's how I see myself. I understood one thing uh, over the last few years, working as a minister. Uh, as a minister, I understood that this work is not done by might nor by strength, but by the Spirit of God. And that is my prayer, that as I continue to minister to you, to people around us, that people will, will not see me, but God, but Christ in me is the hope of glory. There's one more thing I wanted to say. I lived in Southeast Alaska, and by the way, I'm so grateful to um, the people I minister to in Southeast Alaska, in Craig and Ketchikan. But, uh, you know, I, I don't know how many of you traveled to uh, the west coast of Alaska or the north slope. When you land in Nome or Bethel or Barrow, uh, there's a, a striking difference, you know, like you don't see any trees. Like what kind of place is this with no trees? That's how uh, southeast Alaskans feel when they come to central Alaska. Where are the trees? In southeast Alaska, we have big trees. Some of them are like six, seven, up to maybe 10 feet in diameter. And um, I really enjoyed hiking in, in those places. Sometimes a storm would come through uh, those islands. And uh, there's, there, there was something that always surprised me. I would hike and trees I used to see standing. Now, now they were laying on the ground, big healthy trees. In Southeast Alaska, trees don't die because of old age. They die because uh, a, a storm uh, fell them and, and they're down laying on the ground. Healthy trees. And I noticed one thing. Only the ones, regardless of how big and strong those trees were, uh, if they were standing by themselves, they would fall eventually. Uh, in Southeast Alaska, it's, everything's on a slope, not very much soil, and the trees, when they grow, their roots are like a network of roots. They hold each other. They stand together, or if they're by themselves, they will fall. And I feel like that. You know, I, uh, I may be your pastor, but I need you. 
I need your prayers. And if we're going to stand, we're going to stand together. Uh, thank you so much. And thank you, bro uh, Brother Melvin, Brother Kevin. Thank you so much for your leadership and everything that you do for this conference. Let's give him a round of applause here. As we sing our closing hymn, crown him with many crowns, I'm going to invite the elders and then the pastor to stay behind for, pack, for one more picture, an official picture for the conference. Okay? And let's all stand together and sing our wonderful hymn. Blessing that comes straight from the mouth of the Lord. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and his sons, saying, This is the way you shall bless the children of Israel. Say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. 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 You may be seated. I would like to have the elders and the ambassador here with Pastor Adrian. Then I'm going to invite the congregations once we take a picture. It's going to take only one minute. You have an opportunity to be able to congratulate your pastor. 